the M6 3200 ISO film, thousandth of a second at F16. It's a foggy day. Let's see what happens. It's going to be a while till we process these. I'm going to show you processing the film. Well now after a great deal of cleaning on this old equipment we're getting ready to mix up the developer and we're getting um, three liters of water at 125 degrees. That'll work. Now we take our developer and yeah I'm gonna have to cut this this is the D76 that I'm going to use for my 4x5 sheet film. Packages used to be paper, but nowadays there's some indestructible plastic that you can hardly get open. So you dissolve it in very hot water, 125 degrees or so, and then you add water to bring it up to 3.8 liters. This is taking me back. I haven't mixed this stuff in ages and ages. It's going to be very interesting to see how it all works. I had to spend hours cleaning all the equipment. Over spray, dirt, everything, all over everything. Well, there it is. Now we'll just stir that for a good long time. Now, after a good deal of stirring, well, we'll give it a little more just for good measure. Now we're going to decant this into my graduated beaker here, and we'll see how much exactly we have. Two thousand milliliters. Now what I'm going to do is add hot water to bring this up to the required volume. We want to make sure that we got a good solution. This stuff is not all dissolved yet. So I have to spend quite a bit of time whipping it into shape. The trick is not to get too much air in as well. When it's mixed, I'll put a floating lid on top of the solution to keep the oxygen from destroying the developer with time. Well, I seem to have a nice uniform solution now. There's no precipitate in the bottom. It's all good. The temperature dropped a little bit. We have to remember to cool this to 68 degrees before we try to develop any film in there. You'll have a horrible mess. So we're going to use that one for the developer. We're going to use this one for the stop that because I don't have a floating lid for this one and this one we'll use for fixer and then I'll wash them outside in another tank. I guess it's time to mix the stop bath. Well the Ilford stop we mix 1 to 19 so that means hmm, to make uh, 4 liters say um, hmm. What is that? 200, 200 milliliters, 500 makes 10 liters. If I put 400 milliliters of this, Three point eight liters, sixty eight. No, I'm wrong there. That's too strong. I can tell by looking at it that's wrong.
way too strong. That's it. That's the right solution now. Mm -hmm. Now this is Kodak to make 3.8 liters of film and plate fixer. So that's what we want. It's good for 7.6 liters or 2 US gallons for paper, but we're doing film so we got to mix it the stronger way. So we'll get that box open. The Kodak instructions are a little bit simpler. We want to make one gallon. We start with 1.9 liters of water at about 70 degrees. Get our water. We add the water to our tank here. Then it says add 946 milliliters of this part A. And with good luck it's 946 in here exactly. So we don't have to measure that. We do too much thinking either. Don't like thinking much. It's a little tricky to get packages from there's always something, right? Now we use our Kodak thermometer to stir it in. I never used to use rubber gloves when I was a kid. And uh, I used to mix uh, fixer out of rocks of sodium thiosulfate and break them up with my bare hands. It's it pretty cold when you're doing that too. Okay, so we've added that. Now we add part B. And to make part B, 473 yeah we use all of this as well so we add part B and that's uniformly mixed then we're going to have to uh, carry on and uh, bring it up to 3.8 liters. There is a lot of garbage all the time with conventional photography. Okay, so we're up to we're nicely mixed. Now we'll just check our chemical volume and we'll see how much we've got. Because we have to measure these tanks are not graduated. So fill that one up to 2,000 now. Now we've got to add water, room temperature water. Bring this one up to 1800. And just add this. And add this. These are the holders that we use for our film. So when we're going to put the film in, they'll sit in there just like that. That's our fixer. So that's how it works. So we start in the developer, then in the stock, and then in the fixer. I have a floating lid for this developer. 
push it back there. Now what I'm going to do, I bought these little bottles earlier today. Now I bought these little bottles because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use them. I want to process some roll film today as well. So we're going to process the roll film in the small tanks. So I thought what I would do is get these bottles and put the stock bath and the fixer in here. so that I can process my roll film. I'm going to have to mix up a different developer for the roll film because I'll be using it. It's very important to keep everything clean. For the roll film, I'm going to be using Belfosol 3 developer, which is a liquid developer. This is the Elfosol 3. Now I paid $10 for this when I bought it. But the one I bought last night was 15 because mine was expired. So I'm going to get the developer mixed up next. Now I'm going to load my film, 35 millimeter film, in the film tank. And then uh, once I've got the film in the tank, I can put the lights back on and we'll mix the chemicals and we'll go from there. So hang on. Well, that's what I need to develop the film. I need a roll of film, in this case 3200. I need the thing to open the film can. I need the tank. And we're ready to go. I'm going to do that right now. It's going to get dark. Well, now I'm going to mix up the Elfosol developer. I've got 450 milliliters of water. Crack this bottle here. Another seal. Use our very expensive Kodak process thermometer to get that seal out of the way for us. And we'll add 50 milliliters of our solution using a long, thin, graduated cylinder with this other accuracy on the measurement. Allow for the meniscus, we're right on the money. Squeeze the air out of the bottle, it helps a little bit. If you put that lid on super duper tight, that might be okay to use the next time I want to use it. Now we'll just add that to this. Don't forget, it's good to the very last drops. We're going to want to make sure we get everything out of our graduated cylinder. Now, how's our temperature? We're going to have to heat that up just the tiniest bit. Use a bit of a hot water bath. But Bring that up. Somehow it cooled off. Of the we'll set that in the hot water bath here. And this is plastic, so it won't heat up all that fast. In the meantime, I'll get our film. Now I made a little note for myself right on the end of the film, 3200 Delta, and I wrote on here 1 to 9 for 9 minutes. So I set 9 minutes on the timer. My developer is right on the money temperature, so... Set this aside, and get our film tank. And we'll just gently uh, pour the solution in. It's a little while to get it in there, not too bad. There we go. Put the lid on there. Hit the timer. Now it's 10 seconds continual. I like to give it a little wrap on the 
floor and get rid of any air bells. 10 seconds at the initial and then 10 seconds every minute of agitation. So that's my uh, developer. Because I have another roll of film, I've got 100 ASA. Want to go crazy with the agitation? You know, you get marks from uh, agitation around the sprocket holes in the film. We're coming up to the last minute now. It will be time to dump out the developer and put in the stop bath. So I'm just going to pour the developer down the sink. I'll put it in here so we can see. What I don't really see any difference. It'll take about 20 seconds to empty it. Then we'll take the stock bath, which we have right here, and add that to the tank. That will stop the action of our developer. A lot of times we used to just use water for this back in the day, and water back. The stop bath, I guess, is a little more, uh, I don't know, a little more what? Do you know, I don't know how long to fix this film for. Five minutes. We want to overdo things. Stop us. We can reuse. And put the fix around here. And I think we'll give that four and a half minutes because that's like between three to five and that's brand new fixer. So I'll just go one, two, three and a half. Put the lid on that. Pull it up. Now I've got a bucket of water here. At 68 degrees, 20 degrees Celsius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, keep changing the water on the film every minute. So for a good five minutes, that'll give us a thorough um, wash. Pretty excited to see what this film looks like. 3200 film. Got some iceberg and things on here. Well, the fix is drawing to a close now. Very interesting to see what I've got. It's always tempting to pull it out and look at it. There's the chance of damaging things, so you just wait until you're done. Okay, the last 20 seconds, good drain time again, so it's not so critical as the developer. I mean, at this point, we got what we got, and we don't got what we don't got, so we'll soon see. But I'm just going to rinse my hand off so I can get a bucket of water. So we're just going to do a bunch of water changes on this now, so that's how we handle this. Fill up the tank. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's pictures. There's 
there's pictures on that wall. So we'll just dump the water in here. Add another one. And I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to rinse this off because I don't want to get any fixer or any chemistry into the clean water thing. We want this film to last. I mean, that's the whole purpose of it, right? You should let that bath sit in there for about a minute each time. It's the dwell time in the water bath that actually clears your phone and nothing else. So. And this works better than just rinsing with running water. Yeah, it's a long time since I developed a roll of film. That's the last of the wash. Now we'll dump out the last wash water and I'm going to add some photo flow here, which is basically a little bit of pure soap that's going to uh, reduce the surface tension of the water. We'll give that a minute. That'll reduce the surface tension on the water and it'll cut down any water spots that you see doing the dishes again. I tell you, conventional photography is a lot of doing the dishes. So, let's dump that out. Now, rinse off my hands. So. There you have it, an honest to gosh made in Canada film dryer. I'm going to go get my film now. It's ready. It's always important to give it a real good shake. And then we'll take that down and we'll gently hang it on a hanger here. Got some wonderful film hangers. Cost me a bomb back in the day. Oh yeah, there's the Rose Blanche Lighthouse. Oh my goodness, some icebergs. people, lots of different things. Okay, now that's 36 pictures on there. When you realize, you know, with the digital camera, on a ship the size of your fingernail, you have several thousand pictures. So it doesn't uh, bear thinking about any too much. And I think we'll just hang it in there without any area. We're not in a big rush. Now I fully plan to make silver prints from these negatives as soon as possible. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is have a look at them. We're going to scan them on our Epson scanner. This is the 3200 ASA film. And it's a little bit of a tricky thing to cut them like this. Three, six. That's my grandbaby when he was just first born before we left for Newfoundland. Now we put like that in there. Like that. Like three, six. It's nice in there. And it'll take six because that's what I'm used to from making contact sheets back in the day. Cut the negatives in strips of six and put them into the contact print. I'm going to try and get another contact print that I used to have. Because I tell you, there's just something about this process. Lighthouses and icebergs and waves and so many things. Well, that's 24. You get 24 shots on this hole here like that. So now we'll just see how they look. Scan. 
It's going to take a while to scan them too, because we're going to scan these at a very high resolution. So we're going to have a decent result. It's not easy photographing crows. Well, there it is. The negatives are firmly in the carrier. We're ready to go and scan them and see what kind of result we can get. We'll scan these at 6400 dpi. It's going to take quite some time. I just put the film in the scanner. Now we'll close the lid and we'll... Uh
holds it in place. We pull that out, give it a little wee shake, and we clip the film just by the corner on the film hanger. Put it at an angle so that the water will drip off of the corner like that. Lift that one out. Boy, it's a long time since I've done this process. It's a little more work than squeezing the trigger on a digital camera. But somehow there's something to be said for this process. Each click of the shutter costs you six, eight, or ten dollars. A little more careful when you're blasting off endless memory cards. Of course, we're going to scan these later on. I've scanned the 35s already. We'll scan these black and white negatives and see what we've got. But then after that, after we've scanned them, when I'm going to go shoot some more pictures, I think, in the desert. Take the 4x5 field camera out with me and uh, shoot a little bit more of this black and white film and see if we can't start a trend or something. That must not be the only one that's. Now you just pinch off the little drop of water that forms on the corner. Another one will come back. That takes me back to when I was working for Tommy's way back in the day. We'll close the film door to keep the dust off things and we'll leave it alone. The 4x5 negatives go into the scanner two at a time. The film is much bigger so dust won't be such a problem but that we can. There you go, two ready for scanning. It's not fast doing a big scan like this, it takes quite a while. This is our latest print. I just finished stretching it. I like it.